What's going on? This is Alex USA Days. Uh, so today we're going to talk about shift left and shift right development methodologies. Uh, this is actually uh, the last uh, video in the section for the development methodologies. After that, we will move from section two into section three, where we will talk about types of testing, test plans, test creation, and overall, I'll give you um, my methods on creating test plans, test cases, test, uh, test matrices, and approach to managing uh, testing overall in general. I will mostly focus on what uh, I've been using from my experience and types of tests are that are the most popular ones, uh, even though I'll probably list uh, all of them or whatever is out there, but mostly going to focus on what is re really hands-on and being used uh, in different places. Okay, so, uh, but on the today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, shift left and shift right. So, uh, essentially, if you take a look at this coverage, uh, test coverage based on the approach, with shift left methodology, uh, you just tend to move everything or shift everything to the left in terms of testing and you want to start test testing as early as possible that's why you see it spikes here in the development stage starting from the design spikes into development um, goes a little bit down in the test environment overall and even less in deployment and maintenance stage right this is with a shift left so shift left is moving tests and activities closer to development Emph emphasis on problem prevention. This is what is shift left all about. And then there's shift right. And this is another concept where you actually uh, move testing closer to production. So you focus on controlled production testing. So this way you see there's still some tests happen in test environment, but a lot of testing happening on deployment, after deployment, in production, uh, during the maintenance stage. So that's the, the core idea, uh, and that's the core difference between shift left and shift right. Now, um, if we're going to talk about tools and the approaches and uh, what is actually being used, so in shift left, we want to focus uh, and work on early uh, test planning. So QA and overall team is actually participating in uh, customer well not not exactly customer meeting or client meeting but during groomings uh you will talk with uh, product owners or product manager depending who's running uh in the team running the whole uh the process of the you know moving forward all the features and everything that was on the plate for stakeholders but essentially you want to work early with the team and plan test accordingly based on the requirements as the requirements being created. So uh, there is this story or this feature we're gonna work on, what kind of testing can we do on it? Like uh, what kind of testing activities we can build in into the story, right? So it had good, the creation of the documentation goes hand in hand with uh, the ideas how it's gonna be verified, how it's gonna be testing. So this is why it is shifting left a lot, right? So work early on test planning, then there's a lot of coverage that should be done with unit testing by the developers. So a lot of tests, uh, that nuclear test, the atomic test, very small tests that test just the functionality uh, on the core level should be covered with unit tests. So a lot of emphasis here on actually development taking charge of uh, a big chunk of testing here with unit tests and with integration tests. So if they have... Uh, different microservices communicating with one another or they have uh, different components of the system coming together. Uh, all the integration testing also should be done uh, with shift left early on uh, during the development by the developer. So it, it covers a lot in, you know, the idea to prevent bugs, right? So it covers a lot of the functionality early on before the code is actually ready or it's in test environment. Uh, then there's also focus on a lower level testing, on API testing. Um, could be here also like database testing and backend testing. So before there's actual UI, uh, there's still some API and some other uh, ways to interact with the system. 
uh, not just through the user interface. So that type of testing also, uh, you know, prioritize and shift left. So essentially you want to cover as much as possible uh, to make sure you prevent issues before they happen, before they're discovered uh, in the user environment, right? Within the user interface and the UI. Uh, so with shift left, quality is at the center of product planning, design, and architecture. Um, a couple of things that are popular, the framework developments that are popular in shift left is TDD and BDD. Uh, so TDD is test driven development where you write your tests first and then you build code for those tests. And BDD is a behavior driven development, which is uh, came from TDD, but it's about putting the functionality in plain English, uh, how system should behave, uh, using like Gherkin language and then essentially building the functionality around that uh, BDD behavior driven approach, right? I will leave links in the description for shift left uh, for TDD and BDD so you can read about them and uh, learn about them, understand them a little bit better. But in a nutshell, this is what is shift left about. So testing early, uh, a lot of testing activities happening and planning happening uh, before it actually goes into the test environment. I'm not even talking about production or uh, maintenance stages, but even before test, uh, even in development, right? Uh, in dev environment. So what is shift right here? Well, shift right, on the other hand, is actually uh, tends to focus more on production, post-production and maintenance. So what that means? Well, for example, you can do canary releases. So uh, you do smaller batch releases and monitor system, how the system behaves with the new code. Uh, so for example, you will start using only 5% of the users with the new deployment. And you will see, uh, you will monitor logs and uh, whatever transactions are happening in the production to make sure there's nothing going wrong with a smaller batch. And if everything's confirmed okay, there are no regressions, everything looks good, then you're going to increase the percentage of users using the new uh, production, new system, new deployment, and essentially you will increase until you have 100% there. So uh, this is one of the approaches into testing and prod, right? Uh, the other approach, you can actually feature flag your code. So feature flagging in code means a, the feature that you release, you can essentially turn it off immediately. So if something's broken in prod um, and the feature is giving you trouble and normally it is done, again, if you're doing CI CD approach, so you're releasing smaller batches, you're not waiting three months to release like a huge build. No, you ideally release every every week or so. Um, and then you can feature flag. And if something's, again, if something's not working in prod as expected, you immediately turn this feature off without even user noticing that, okay, something was there that was breaking the system, right? Also idea of shift right is monitoring production logs for errors, response times, uh, how is the production handling load, uh, and creating automated regression suits in production. So large automated regression suits in production and to end testing after deployment. So it runs through, ideally the scenarios should create uh, data and then remove the data. So you, you're uh, creating tests that are clean and they're not uh, adding any extra data into production aside from you know, the test phase while they're executing. Um, shift left and shift right are mostly uh, DevOps terms and a lot of talk about uh, shift left and shift right in agile and DevOps, but it is also, you know, it is also part of QA. So if you work specifically in a team that try to implement one of those approaches, uh, as a QA engineer, you'll have to participate and you'll have to bring testing either more to the left or more to the right. Again, all of this is more or less based on my experience. It might be different explanation in the place where you're going to work or implement it differently. This is fine. I mean, uh, a lot of companies just uh, implement things as they wish, as they design, desire, right? They just kind of take the core ideas and bend them. Um, also, shifting left or shifting right doesn't really mean that there's no testing in test environment. Uh, there's still going to be regression end-to-end -end tests, uh, acceptance testing on the UI side, uh, 
in the actual test environment. But the focus is shifted. Uh, my personal thought on either shift in left and right, I think you have to implement a little bit of everything. So you do want to shift left. You definitely want to have a lot of coverage early on on the functionality. You want to have unit tests and integration tests. You want to have API covered uh, in order to prevent uh, bugs getting into test environment. You want to rule out all the bugs before they get to test. So the test testing goes smoothly and you don't have to open tons of bugs and send the uh, tickets back for the developers to fix them. Uh, but you also want to make sure that your prod is stable and there are no issues in production after the release. There's, you definitely, if your production is testable, you definitely want to do a regression in production. You definitely want to make sure your uh, release is not breaking anything. So I think the, the ideal approach is somewhere in between. Uh, of course, everything depends on the resources and time frame for the testing that is allowed. But uh, the best case scenario where you actually have both uh, shift left testing and design and approach implemented, some of the shift right as well, and also you have uh, you know confidence and good coverage in the test environment. So whenever you're pushing something through the pipeline, you're you're confident that you know you this build uh, is not going to break anything and the, the features, the code is everything's going to work as expected. Okay, so I will leave uh, some links to all of those terminologies in the description so you can do some more research and read about them. Uh, yeah, I'll leave a like. If you like the video, subscribe uh, to my channel. I will post a lot more. And again, we're moving into more like actual test, test cases, test creation, and uh, different tools and so on. So we're getting there. Uh, we're getting into the uh, becoming QA professional from pretty much from the scratch. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching. This was Alex USA Days and bye-bye.